Okay, so I'll go ahead and start to pull the side wall loose, and you can see it's, it's certainly stuck into place, but there we go. So you see we're sort of peeling the outer edge of the model away, and that's the last bit to cut. Okay, so there you go. You can see that pulled a little bit of the model out with it. A lot of times I'll run the knife along it and actually cut it away from the side. Well, it doesn't really matter. You're always going to lose the outermost few millimeters of the model. But we'll go ahead and clean up, clean up a slice here and try to remove one. So you can see that, of course, this is no longer, no longer loose and granular. Uh, the gelatin is set up very nicely here, and that's what's going to allow us to actually slice this thing up and remove intact slices. Now, in the case of this particular model, because you're looking at a variety of different granular materials being used, the best we'll do is to preserve very, very thin slices. The drying process proceeds differently in the different granular materials, so it's not possible to cut big, thick slices here and have sort of that portable geologic map type of effect that's uh, in the transpression video that's just below this on the page. That's something that you can do if you use purely sand, or uh, sand and, and microbeads alone. But if you use any of these finer and slightly more cohesive materials, you're not going to be able to, to produce those big blocks of finished model. But you can still get a pretty good record of your experiment, and that is upcoming. So there we're looking inside the model. Looks about like what you saw through the sidewall, so that's always cool to, to know that what's happening inside the model is what you see happening through the side wall as well. Uh, at this point I'll take a little bit of the post kinematic sand off the top and get ready to start taking a slice. Now I don't want any of this material so I'll cut the model there. I'll cut it free from the back stop as well. And this is the most difficult part which again would be less difficult in a pure sand model, I'm going to have to try to sort of fillet this off of the base, which is very challenging, but again, this is why you want a thin and flexible box cutter style knife. And the knife blade is going a, a centimeter or two under there, so this will allow me to, to do several slices. Okay, so at this point, the model has been freed from the base there. We're cut free from the backstop. We're cut at the front end. So we're going to cut a slice, and all I need now is a piece of plastic to lay this slice onto. So I'll go get that, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, so I've got scrap of sidewall plexiglass here. Also have a very nice thin flexible plastic ruler. Those are the tools I'm going to use to actually remove the slice. There's already a video on the page. Uh, it's been up there for a while, but it shows the rest of this, this slicing process in detail. But we're here. I'll run through a slice, uh, maybe two slices. We'll see how this one goes. So again, we're separated from the bottom, separated from the back. Good vertical cut here. So at this point, well, not too thick, not too thin. Uh, again, thinner, thinner is usually better when we're dealing with varied granular materials, uh, like in this model. Okay, so we've got a slice cut there, and it should be ready to fall away. And because of the different materials used, sometimes it's tough to get those very bottom layers to, to peel away as one. But we're going to see what happens here. Okay. 
not too bad through most of that slice. We lost a little bit way out there in the foreland. Not too big a deal. What's also cool about this is that you can usually take whatever did not peel away and actually just stick it back onto the model. It's still wet enough that it will uh, that it should should bind into place. So if we can remove that piece down here, sort of tack it back into place and here in a moment I'm going to drip a little bit of water onto the seam between the two pieces and that should sort of reactivate the gelatin and literally kind of weld kind of weld those pieces uh, back together but there you go there's a nice slice of duplex model here uh, and of course we'll take several more uh, until it's until it's fully sliced up the thickness you see here um, what are we looking at slightly over a centimeter um, I don't know that's that's actually a, a little bit thick uh, if, if you can do it thinner than that that's good again that's to, to make drying efficient because this is gelatin uh, any mold that's around will grow on it very readily it's sort of like a growth substrate kind of like auger almost so uh, you want to keep this as dry as possible it sometimes it's good to actually run a, a fan on it while it dries but that's the process from preparation of the gelatin solution and the post kinematic sand all the way through to the slicing here once these slices are cut just lay them out flat somewhere uh, turn them regularly I usually try to turn them several times a day until they're dry. Uh, that takes a few days. It's actually a very unpleasant process. Uh, I have several models that need to be gelled right now because I hate doing this. But it will soon be done and this box will be freed up ready to make a new one.